Hi guys, so it's looking more and more likely, although not guaranteed, that the SNP will win a majority in the Scottish Parliament following the elections in May. So how will Boris Johnson respond to this? It is important to remember that it is part of the SNP's manifesto to hold a second referendum. So if they do win a majority, it would be the will of the Scottish people to have a second referendum. So how, how is Boris Johnson going to respond to that? We're not going to hear directly from Boris Johnson, but we're going to hear from Douglas Ross, who's the leader of the Scottish Conservatives. And he's going to tell us how Boris Johnson is going to respond. If the next Scottish Parliament contains a majority, even a supermajority, for independence, will Boris Johnson just refuse to grant a referendum in any circumstances? Well, sadly, that doesn't even matter to the Nationalists because they've said they'll go ahead with a wildcat legal referendum anyway. So no matter what happens, if you vote for a Nationalist party, be it Nicola Sturgeon's Nationalists or Alex Salmon's Nationalists... OK, first of all, the question was not about the SNP or Alex Salmon. The, the question was about Boris Johnson. But isn't it interesting that Douglas Ross drops the name of Alex Salmond and he, you know, he says it's a nationalist party and the SNP is a nationalist party. What is he doing here? Why is he promoting, in a sense, the ALBA party that was set up by Alex Salmond and launched last week? I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to split the vote. He understands that if he can convince people that there are two parties for independence, then it's going to benefit the Conservative Party. Now, I don't know who's backing financially the ALBA party. I don't know if it's Alex Hammond himself that's pumping money into it, or if money is coming from England, the Conservatives, America, I don't know, Russia, <laughs> I don't know. But it is interesting that this party, which is promoting the idea that you need to vote for them and not the SNP in order to deliver independence, this party appeared at the last minute uh, and it's run by someone who's controversial in Scotland. If there is a chance that he, his party, the Alba party, take votes away from the SNP, who will benefit? Well, the Conservatives would benefit, the Labour Party would probably benefit, the Liberal Democrats would benefit. The SNP are the main party at the moment. The Conservatives are a spent force. They understand that they're not going to win a majority. So they, their, their approach seems to me to be, in my mind, to attempt to split the SNP's vote, or to split the independence vote, I should say, um, between the SNP and any other parties that are um, looking to push the idea of independence forward. Their priority will be another referendum, whether it's a, a legal referendum or an illegal wildcat referendum. They will not be focused on recovery. They cannot be focused on rebuilding Scotland when they're trying to rip us out of the United Kingdom. The question asked wasn't about what the SNP will do, though. It's about what the Conservatives will do, since you are you know, the leader of the Scottish Conservatives. If there is a majority for independence in the next Scottish Parliament, will Boris Johnson refuse to grant a referendum? But, but that's the problem, Sophie. That's exactly the point I'm making. It doesn't matter if the Prime Minister... No, but will he or not, though? And if it, the Prime you Minister... Know, other people can decide whether it matters. People want to know what it's going to do. Yeah, and the Prime Minister has been clear. He does not want another independent referendum. OK, it's clear. Boris Johnson is clear. Boris Johnson is a compulsive liar, so we don't know whether Boris Johnson cares about Scottish independence or not. But will he do it is the more important question. It would be extremely damaging, I believe, politically to Boris Johnson if the SNP win a majority, if the majority of people in Scotland vote for a party whose manifesto is independence and Boris Johnson rejects that, I think it would be um, extremely difficult for him politically to, to uh, defend that position. You know, we've seen how the uh, the Conservatives and Boris Johnson in particular were banging on always about how Brexit was the will of the people and the people, the majority of people voted for Brexit and that should have been delivered because of the vote. Then how is he going to stand up and say the SNP don't have the right to call for or hold a second referendum when the majority of the people in Scotland asked for that? I, I don't think he's going to um, reject a, a second referendum. He will try, 
But at the end of the day, he'll have to accept the situation. In Scotland, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We need to focus on our recovery and rebuilding. But the nationalists will ignore that. The nationalists have already said, and Nicola Sturgeon set up a commission within the SNP with an 11-point plan to have another independence referendum, even if it's an illegal wildcat referendum without uh, the Section 30 order from the UK government. We know that Boris Johnson doesn't want another referendum, but will he refuse to grant another referendum in all circumstances? The Prime Minister has been clear he's not going to grant um, the powers for another independence referendum because he thinks it's absolutely wrong for Scotland right now to be dragged back into that destructive arguments of the past, to go through all the uh, pain and suffering that we had in Scotland through that last debate when we should be focused on recovery and rebuilding, but the nationalists are going to ignore. So what he's trying to do here is he's trying to paint a picture of the SNP as a party that obs- that is obsessed with a second independence referendum and they're not focused on the pandemic and they're trying to paint the picture that paint the picture of you know why should you vote for a party that doesn't care about the the pandemic doesn't care about jobs doesn't care about ordinary day-to-day uh, workings of government they're obsessed with instead with they're obsessed with independence if you look at questions in prime minister's questions when the SNP ask a question that's unrelated to independence, Boris Johnson injects independence into the situation. <laughs> the, the people who are obsessed with the referendum is the Conservative Party. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to undermine the SNP by saying that this is a party obsessed with independence, when in reality they, they're not. They, are, they have other policies. And the Scottish Parliament, uh, the government in, in the Scottish Parliament is quite popular at the moment. The government in Scotland is popular. They have a lot of support, means that they're doing the right job. When it comes to dealing with the pandemic, for example, or other issues, there are issues that, you know, they're not popular on, but that's, that's normal in any political, uh, with any political party. You know, you find a political party in any part of the world, there'd be parts that there be things that they're popular for and things that they're unpopular for. So to say that, you know, the SNP are obsessed with uh, independence and are, and are un- incapable of actually running a government because they're obsessed with uh, independence doesn't really fly even with the people in Scotland um, or even with people outside Scotland. This is an attempt to undermine the SNP with the idea that, okay, if we can, we, we tried painting Nicola Sturgeon as incompetent, we tried to paint her as obsessed with independence, that didn't work. Okay, what is the next step? Perhaps the next step, I don't know, perhaps I'm speculating here, the, the, the next step would be to split the vote. Back a party that would undermine the SNP. Now, I don't know if, I'm speculating once again, I don't know if that's true or not. But it would be a logical step. If the SNP win a majority, then what do you do? You attack them for for focusing on things that are not important instead of things that are important. But you have to remember that the SNP have never said when they're going to call the referendum. The, The Tories continue to say, we need to focus on the pandemic. We need to focus on creating jobs. The SNP have never said we want to have a referendum tomorrow or we want to have a referendum during the pandemic. They've never said that. This is something that the Tories are trying to convince people that the SNP are saying, but it's lies. Ignore that and they're gonna say, we'll have a referendum anyway, and that will take Scotland backwards rather than focusing on our recovery and rebuilding from this pandemic. Would it be democratic though for Boris Johnson to refuse to grant a referendum if there is a majority in favor of independence parties? Well, it wouldn't be democratic for the Nationalists to go ahead with a wildcat legal referendum, but they're going to do it anyway. So, Boris Johnson is not a Democrat. Notice that he didn't answer the question. He started, he invented his own question and he answered that question. He said, it doesn't matter because they're going to go, go ahead with... So, it doesn't matter if Boris Johnson refuses to accept the democratic right of the Scottish people. You know, the Scottish people vote for a party that say, 
we want to hold a second referendum. And Boris Johnson is going to reject that. This is Well, this seems to be the case. With, this seems to be what Douglas Ross is saying here. We're going to reject... Um, we're going to reject the, the the calls for a second referendum because it doesn't matter even if we do reject it because they're going to hold an illegal one as well. What he's trying to do is he's trying to paint a picture that, you know, you have to vote for someone else because um, these people don't care about the legality of a referendum or not because they're going to try and hold uh, it legally they they don't have a leg to stand on. This is the conservative thinking. They don't have a leg, a leg to stand on. So then they're going to go down the illegal route. And this is the whole point. This is why I'm asking people to unite behind the strongest party to stop the SNP and stop the nationalists. I'd like to do it with the Scottish Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats. But if they're not up for that fight, if they can't see the threat in front of us right now, then people have to see there is a party that's willing to challenge the SNP, willing to stand up to the nationalist threat that we are facing here in Scotland. And that's the Scottish Conservatives. We he doesn't actually have anything to sell people. He's basically saying we're not the SNP. Vote for us. We're not the SNP. Vote for us. We're going to stand up to the SNP. The union must be in a very bad state if the conservative and unionist party are not actually trying to promote the union, are not trying to say you need to vote for us because of the union. <laughs> vote for us because we're not the SNP. That's a sad state of affairs, but it does represent the fact that the, the union is getting weaker. The people who have weakened the union are the conservative and unionist party headed by Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is the greatest threat to the Union. And it's not just in Scotland, it's also in Northern Ireland. Boris Johnson will probably be the Prime Minister that ended the Union. And it's not because of what the SNP are doing. Well, not all, <laughs> not all in the, the ball is not all in their court, but a great deal of the damage to the Union has come from Boris Johnson both in Northern Ireland and in Scotland. So will Boris Johnson reject um, the calls for a second referendum? I think at the beginning, yes, but then he will eventually give in. The calls for a referendum will grow louder um, following, the refer following the election in May, and it will become much more difficult politically for the Conservatives to reject um, the idea of a second referendum. Then what their goal will be is to undermine the SNP, undermine the idea of independence. So the first attack, their first plan of attack is, of course, to try and stop the independence referendum. And then when it comes to the, the chance to hold a referendum, they're going to, of course, not defend the union, but attack independence. Because they know that the union <clears throat> is going to die. The union is on life support. There's nothing really else they can do for the union, but they can try and stop independence. The train is moving in that direction. They're going to try and throw as many bricks at the windows, at the, at the tracks as, as much as possible. But they know they're fighting a losing battle. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?